A few years ago, my son was having trouble with an ice maker on, uh, I believe it was a Frigidaire refrigerator. Sometimes the ice maker would work, sometimes it wouldn't. What we eventually found out was that there was no fault with the ice maker. The problem was with the freezer. The freezer was working intermittently and eventually the refrigerator failed completely. My son gave me this ice maker to tinker with and to use parts on mine should I need them. So, before you start to condemn the ice maker and start diagnosis and repair on it, make sure that water is freezing in your freezer. Put a cup of water in it or an old ice tray if you remember what those were. Make sure the freezer is working properly before you continue. Now here's a disclaimer. You're working with 120 volts. I had no problem disconnecting my ice maker. I didn't worry about the 120 volts. I made sure my hands were dry and I unplugged the plastic connector with wires in it. I never cut the circuit breaker off. Now use your discretion here whether you want to take the chance on doing that or not. I had no problem with it. I'll be working with two different ice makers here. First we'll start with the old one that my son gave me and then the one on my refrigerator was giving trouble. We'll get into that. But before you do anything, do some research online. Enter the model number of your refrigerator at the website of the maker of the refrigerator and see what information you can get about your ice maker. You can also try googling the part number on the ice maker itself. And of course there's plenty of videos on YouTube other than this one on how to repair ice makers. The only special tools you'll need is a good ohmmeter, a good multimeter. Here's a typical wiring diagram, a wiring schematic for some of the earlier ice makers. Like I say, you need to Google your part number and get the exact information as far as the wiring schematic. The wiring connector and color codes can sometimes vary. In my case, uh, the green and yellow and the yellow were side by side. That was for the water valve. And the other two were line in or voltage and neutral. This photo shows the timer motor and right beside it, it is a white cam that drives the white shaft that uh, ejects the ice cubes. And beside the cam is one of the micro switches and right behind it is another. The micro switch in the foreground is adjustable and that adjusts the size of your ice cubes. The little shaft with the spring around it at the upper right hand corner of this photo it's what I refer to as the bale. That's the bale you lift to turn the ice maker off and on. You could test this timer motor with jumper leads, fused jumper leads that you could make, 120 volts. To remove and test this timer motor by applying current to it. You can also use your meter on this timing motor on the leads to check for infinity for an open circuit or you can check the wires from the wire to the case of the motor for short. The heater element turns on at the proper time to make it easier for the ice maker to eject the ice cubes. And of course the timer motor controls everything. Uh, it times everything and it also ejects the ice cubes when they're ready. Check continuity of your micro switches with your meter and switch them off and on several times to make sure that they work flawlessly. Continuity of course means that you have a good connection. This photo shows how to diagnose and check all the micro switches which in this case are all identical. And this photo of course shows some of the components. If you remove the bi-metal thermostat, you can test it by putting it in the freezer, freezing it, then taking it out of the freezer, letting it thaw, and of course checking it several times to make sure that it's consistent. This meter reading is showing that it is open, no reading at all, infinity. These two large black leads are for the heater assembly. With your meter leads hooked to the heater assembly, 
and the heater assembly wires are disconnected for this test. You should show roughly 83 ohms. Now that's going to vary from brand to brand, manufacturer to manufacturer, but as long as you don't show open, which would be no reading at all, or shorted, then roughly your ohms reading should be 60 to 80 ohms. Now this little 102 degree overtemp switch is actually a thermal fuse. Uh, once it blows, it blows, it's gone. And that protects in case this heater stays on too long and overheats. The temperature control switch is at the heart of everything and of course it can be tested by freezing and thawing in your freezer and testing and making sure that it's consistent in operation too. And here's a photo of the case showing where all the components go. Okay, so much for the older unit. Like I said, I found no problems in testing this ice maker. The problem was the freezer on the old refrigerator. Okay, now we'll move on to why I made this video. I just couldn't find enough information online to do what I needed to do. My ice maker on my Kenmore quit working completely. It is probably 10 to 15 years old and has never given any trouble until now. I have removed the plastic cover on the end of this timer. It just pulls right off. To remove this unit, loosen the three quarter inch screws on this unit and just let it hang down and then disconnect your wiring connector shown in the next photo. Before you remove this ice maker, you may want to run some tests with your multimeter. The leads go through the appropriate holes shown later in this video and you can run some tests on it. On my refrigerator, the two upper leads shown here, one is ground, the yellow and the green is ground, and the other one's for the water valve. And the other two are line in, voltage, and neutral. Using the test points shown here in this little schematic, you will find out whether you have power or not. And of course you will find out whether you have uh, other problems with the unit. What they refer to here is mold. That is the ice cube tray itself. They call it the mold. And here's another parts breakdown. These test points weren't easily seen in this photo, so I labeled them using Photoshop. Now my refrigerator uses this type circuit, almost like a printed circuit, to eliminate all the wires. After running several tests, I knew that the timer motor was just fine. And after I tested the other components, the very last thing that I found cured my problem. My ice maker was intermittent and then it quit working completely. And this little set of points here, I cleaned these points. And after cleaning the points and spraying them with a little bit of WD-40, that fixed my ice maker. It's been working now for three months with no problem at all. The best thing to clean points with would be a point type file that's used in automotive. I was in automotive my whole life in automotive repair. But you can also use a matchbook cover. You can use a small piece of emery cloth. You can use a fingernail file if you don't have anything better. A metal fingernail file. After you clean those points, run a piece of clean cardboard between them. And of course you can check continuity with your meter. Check it several times to make sure it's consistent. Okay, well I fixed mine. These individual components may cost you more than a whole ice maker. I have seen ice makers listed at a very low price, very reasonable price. But if you look up, maybe it'll be just a dirty set of points like it was in my case. The song Summer Place should be playing here. Would you like for me to sing it? Oh, I don't think so. Thanks for watching my videos and good luck on your projects. See ya.